Today, I'm going to show you every animal that I currently keep. So I haven't done a reptile room since 2021. It has been two years, ladies and gentlemen, since I have done a reptile room tour, and I think it's high time that we get one in. So we're just gonna go ahead and go through every single animal I have in this room. Might be a shorter little bit of a video. Uh, a couple animals are in brumation. Some of them are kinda hard to get out, and I don't want to necessarily bother too much, but we're gonna do the best we can to try and get all of these animals on camera for you. So. Let's get into it. So first and foremost, this is John. He is my male Argentine black and white tegu. You can see he's doing really well. Looks great. Excellent body condition. You can see that little bit of a, a regrown tail there. Uh, he is wild caught, so I'm not exactly sure when he lost that tail. Um, their enclosure is kind of broken down a little bit right now because it is actually brumation time for the tegus um, as well as for some other animals. We're gonna see, I'm gonna watch him because he's very food motivated, so we're just gonna see if we can see anybody else. Yeah, we can, and there's Daenerys. That is my female black and white tegu. She looks absolutely amazing, doesn't she? Don't want to bother her too much. So I'm going to close that back down. Uh, the water's filthy. I need to clean that out today. Yeah. This is Joan. He's my little buddy. But, yeah. I'm not going to bother him too much because, like I said, they're in brumation. But I'm just going to let him sit. Um, I actually need to replace some lights in here because um, I still want them to have heat. And this burnt out which is actually why they're in brumation right now. So that's awesome. But yeah, so those are the two tegus. All right, I'm gonna get her on camera before she goes and hides. Alrighty, so this is little Miss Bellatrix. This is my Western hognose. She's het snow, and she's just a curious little snake. Oh, she's a little bit upset right now, obviously. Also might be thinking she's getting fed because it is time to feed all the snakes, so. She's doing as well as ever. She's just in this bin temporarily. I don't like keeping snakes in bins. Um, it, but it's also not got a whole lot in it. It's just got a tube and a water dish and deep substrate for her to dig. Uh, oh, there he is right here. This is Legolas. His lighting turned off because he's about to go into uh, winter mode. So I wanted to start getting him off of the uh, heat completely before he goes fully into the brumation area, which is a colder room because to get these guys to breed You need to chill them out a lot. So that's what I'm gonna try and do And I'm looking for a female for this dude because he's absolutely gorgeous. I'd love to have Legolas babies um, but Yeah, so this is his enclosure right now. Uh, it's also not spectacular um, just got some universal rocks decorations and some coconut fiber as well as that little temple thing and some fake plants. Um, I'm going to be upgrading him into a four foot enclosure soon enough uh, because he needs the space. People say on the internet that you can keep these guys in uh, these 40 gallon enclosures um, and I disagree. I don't think that these should be kept in 40 gallons so I'm going to put him in a four foot enclosure here in a bit. Alright, you can't see him super well there but that is Caraxes. He is my male Solomon Island ground boa. Um, he still hasn't eaten for me. I got him uh, like 14 months ago or something like that and he still hasn't eaten for me, uh, which is really odd. I'm a little concerned that he might never eat for me unfortunately, but that's kind of unfortunately how these animals go because they are wild caught. Sometimes they just don't adapt to captivity at all and then they'll just end up crashing, which I think might be what's going to happen with him. Um, I'm trying everything to get him to eat. Obviously, I want him to eat and I want him to do well because I love that snake, but at this point I'm a little bit low on hope that he's going to be eating for me. Uh, on the other hand, you can't see her because uh, she is in that cork tube, but my female Solomon Island ground boy is eating perfectly well in this enclosure that you guys saw me set up in a video that I'll tagging the cards um, so she's doing actually really really well for me which is great she eats every time 
uh, no hesitation, so I think she's going to do great here. Um, and I might end up needing to find another male to pair with her, because I am planning on breeding Solomon and Ground Boa babies here. Don't know how these got all askew. There we go. That's a little bit better. More flesh. Alright, so moving on down, we have Sirius. This is Sirius Black. Oh my god. Alright, this is Sirius Black. You can see he is deep in shed. He is my Burmese python. Um, absolutely love this snake. He's my most handleable animal in the reptile room. Um, but I'm not going to pull him out, of course, because he is in shed, so I don't want to bother him too much. Uh, but he's doing great. He eats perfectly well. He eats a medium rat um, once a week. So he's going to be upgraded here soon um, into this enclosure, which this snake, of course, she was in blue. And then right before I started to film, she blew up her enclosure with shed. Um, I'm not quite sure why she had such a broken up shed uh, because I check the humidity in here constantly. Um, and it was great. And I missed enclosures down twice a day. So there wasn't an issue, but why you do this? Why you make the enclosure look like that? It looks like she actually has a little bit of stuck shed on top of her head, so I'm gonna pull her out in a few minutes and get that off because I don't want her to sit with that. Maybe I'll soak her for a little bit. But this is Minerva. She is my sun tiger reticulated python. Um, as you can see, she is also doing pretty, pretty well in this four foot enclosure, um, but She's outgrowing it, as you can probably see, she's pretty big now, uh, so I'm going to be ordering her either a 6 foot or an 8 foot PVC enclosure, um, just to get her more space, you know, uh, because these animals do need to be able to stretch out to the length of their enclosure, so I want to give her that opportunity, and I want to give her a little bit more height. This is like a foot tall enclosure, uh, I think it might be 15 inches tall, actually, um, and retics do like to climb, so I want to give her that option. Uh, so when I upgrade her, I'm going to put Sirius, who does not climb because he's a berm, uh, into this enclosure. Um, so that he can be in a bigger cage and she will be in something bigger as well. But like I said, more vertically oriented. Alright, and then right here... Alrighty, this is Johnny Walker. He is my male baby ball python. Uh, I put him in this uh, three foot enclosure. I don't remember who used to be in here. I put him into this three foot enclosure uh, when I put Minerva in the four foot uh, because he is a ball python. Uh, he'll do good in his three foot enclosure for a little while anyway. When he's an adult, he's obviously going to be in a four by two by two. Um, and I put this big tube of cork bark in here as you can see. Uh, he loves it. He loves to sit in that cork tube, but if he wants to get warm, He'll go to that little black hide box in the back where his heat is and he's just doing phenomenally well he also eats every time which is a little bit more unusual for a ball python but eh, there you have it and we have one more snake that you guys have seen before i'm gonna throw some b-roll of him up because he is also in shed right now uh this is salazar he is my male yellow anaconda he is full grown uh, about seven or eight feet, uh, and he's doing really well in this, um, in this eight foot enclosure that I built for him. Um, he's doing really, really well. Uh, he, he eats every three to four weeks. Um, I was going to feed him this weekend, uh, cause it was time, but he did go into blue. So I wasn't going to offer him food in blue because it would probably be a waste. I doubt he would take it. But he's doing very, very well. I'm getting more used to him. He's getting more used to me. I'm working on socializing him uh, just partially by sitting outside of his enclosure every day for a while, like reading a book, doing college work. Um, so he gets used to me being around and I'm making sure to open the enclosure at least once or twice a day, even just to mist it down. Uh, so he doesn't associate opening the enclosure with food. And that's been working. I've been doing it a few times. And after the first couple of times, he stopped coming out for food. Uh, whenever I would open the doors, so that's definitely good to see. And if you're wondering where Nettlebrand, my other male yellow anaconda, is, he's at Snake Discovery now. I took him to Emily and Ed at the Tinley Park NARBC Reptile Show, uh, just because I do want to breed yellow anacondas, um, but having three yellow anacondas is a lot of anaconda for me. 
Um, I want to breed them, but I don't want to breed a lot of them, and having just one male and one female, that's totally fine with me. So I took Emily and Ed, my other male, because uh, there's some other projects that I want to be working on too, and I obviously don't have the space right now for three full-grown yellow anacondas on top of the other big constrictors I have. So if you're wondering, he is still alive, uh, he's just not with me anymore. Alrighty, so that's the last of the animals I think you guys really knew I had. The next one I'm going to show you, you guys might have seen in some shorts or on the TikTok, because uh, I showed her there. Um, and I guess actually the other two I've shown on TikTok too. So if you're not following me on TikTok, go follow. I'll put a link in the description below. But this is a new snake that I got from AnimalCon this year. This is Islan Zadi. She is my Colombian boa. And she really likes to hang out on the substrate lip of this four foot enclosure. This used to be Nettlebrand's enclosure, as you can see. Um, and I was going to put the legless lizard in here, but I thought she would do better because boas do like to climb a lot more than legless lizards do. So I put her in this four foot enclosure. Uh, right now she has um, that halogen uh, from Arcadia, as well as a Shade Dweller UVB bulb. Um, and she has this big old climbing branch and some fake leaves, a big water dish. Hide back there. It's another one way back there uh, behind the water dish you can't really see. Um, and then I have this big rock. Um, and she's doing really well. She is active, but not overly active. That makes me think she is stressed out. Um, and she's just so absolutely stunning. Look at that pattern. I know that a lot of people are big into morphs. I'm not. <clears throat> there are very few snake morphs that I want to own. One of which you'll actually see here in a few minutes. But... As far as snakes go, I generally prefer the wild type colorations, and you can definitely see why on this beautiful girl. Now, she is het albino and het arabesque, uh, but I'm not planning on breeding her up to now. I might in the future, um, if I decide to get an albino boa, um, I guess I'll get a male, but right now, she's just going to be an ambassador uh, for the species and for conservation in the Amazon rainforest, so I love her. I love her so much. One of my favorite snakes. Alright, I think I'm going to have to put up some b-roll of this guy because he's hunting right now and I can't see him anywhere. Um, but this is the enclosure. This used to be for the Indonesian tree boa who sadly passed away about six months ago or so. So I cleaned out this enclosure really well and I put a baby toke gecko in here. So I now have a toke gecko. This is Captain Falcone. Uh, brownie points if you know where Captain Falcone's name comes from. But he's in here so... Oh! Oh! I think I found him. Yeah. Might be able to kind of see him back there. Oh, yep. You can kind of see him a little bit right there. That speckling. Uh, he's a really, really pretty toke. There, you can see his eyeball right there. Uh, I obviously want to leave him be. Toke geckos, as I'm sure you guys know, are not known for their handle ability. And he's hunting right now because I just put some crickets in there. <clears throat> so, don't want to bother him too much, but this enclosure is almost fully bioactive. I want to get a pothos plant uh, to replace this fake one, but the mother-in-law's tongue in the back is actually real. Um, and there's some cork bark and stuff in there. Uh, so I'm going to add some isopods and things like that. We obviously have the sphagnum moss hanging off the background. This is my favorite bioactive enclosure I ever built, so I'm glad it's getting some use again. Because uh, I never stripped it down after uh, Maylis, my Indo tree boa, passed away. She was another wild-caught situation that just never ate for me. So after a few months of her not eating, I wasn't exactly shocked when she didn't end up thriving. So it's a shame. I really like that snake too, but... And it just happens. That's a part of keeping reptiles. So, I no longer have her, but her enclosure is being put to good use uh, for Captain Falcone now. Alright, so I have one more animal to show you guys that you guys probably haven't seen yet. Uh, but she is a snake, and she is up in my quarantine room. So I'm going to go film on my phone up there, because I don't want to freak her out with the camera. Uh, but I'll get her out so you can see what she looks like. 
Alrighty, so you guys can see this is my beautiful new albino Burmese python. So this is a female that is eventually going to be paired with Sirius. Um, now I'm not going to pull her out because she is a little bit nervous right now and I am trying to feed her later today. Uh, but yeah, you can see she's just in this quarantine bin. I'll put some b-roll. She is a pretty handleable snake, but she is so absolutely beautiful as you can see. Um, she is actually unnamed, so if you guys want to leave a comment down below to recommend a name for this girl, um, I will definitely look at all of those. But yeah, I have basically always wanted an albino Burmese python. They've always been like that big snake for me, and I finally have one. And she's absolutely amazing. I uh, couldn't have asked for a better looking Burmese python. Uh, she's hiding right now. Her heat tape is on that side. She's in this Universal Rocks decoration that I cut a hole in to turn into a hide. Uh, so I'm going to leave her be. But yeah, this is my new albino berm. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video in any capacity, please click like if you haven't done this already. Please click the subscribe button to uh, follow and turn on notifications to see everything that we do here. New videos once a week at least. I'm trying to do twice a week. Um, whenever that works with my schedule. So, if you want to see one or two videos a week here, uh, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you go down into the description below, you'll find a link to my Patreon page, um, a link to buy some merch, and a link to go support US ARC. Um, oh, and the TikTok. TikTok is going to be down there because I'm posting a few times a week over there. So, follow those links, show them some love, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, YouTube.